I'm just going to go out and say it. I think Nick Kyrgios is secretly a genius. Kyrgios, or Kiggs, as many of us know him, receives a fair amount of stick in the tennis world, especially from the media. Now, I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve some of the press, but I certainly think there are some amazing qualities that he possesses that seem to be drowned out by all the negativity sent out by the media outlets. Having watched his YouTube podcast with Elliot Lonely recently, there are two amazingly positive things that really struck me about Kiggs that seem to get very little attention. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with the following clips from their podcast. I just feel like a normal person as I am today. Like, and these guys that I train with know that I haven't really changed much as a person. Like, I, I, I just wanted to prove a lot of people wrong. I wanted to go out there saying, like, a guy like me, like a fat kid from Canberra, who you know could, had, was decent at ball striking, could could literally take it to some of the best in the world. And I think it's 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 comical for me because like <laughs> some of the things I do, and I'm just like to go out there and do that. I think it inspires a lot of people because I'm very relatable in the mistakes, the things I'm going through. It's like, gee, someone like, like this so normal can still do things on a global stage that are quite impressive. But, <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, for sure, like tennis is like, um, you know, the platform it's given me today to obviously, you know, a bit about my foundation. I'll try and just help as many people as I can. I think I was, I was actually quite professional um, until I was like 18. 18, 19, and then obviously everything happened with my grandma. She passed away. She was probably the closest, my closest friend, my best friend. And ever since then, I kind of, I don't know, something something definitely changed when, when she left. Uh, I definitely hit the crazy side a little bit. But I lost my way for a little bit, and then obviously the foundation helped me. You know, I, I tried to take it away from myself. I tried to be able to play for something more than me. And I was just thinking, like, I have the ability to go to these hospitals and do all these, like, activations, we call them, um, when we're on tour and that was just, that was a massive wake up call for me. I was like, fuck, like I've got all this, you know, whatever it is like platform money. And I'm, I just decided to put it into somewhere that wasn't about myself. And now I just feel like I just try and play and inspire people to, to believe in themselves. Like I love going to like kids clinics and seeing these kids struggle and actually lack confidence. So I can just say to like, look, like it's like, I just try, I like to give people confidence and I just like to, that's what it is. I guess that's what I'm playing for now. I feel like a lot of people can relate. I've got a quite a big following and that's what I play for now. Um, well, it's not the fact that I think I changed. It's just like, I didn't really realize the impact I could have. You know, there was one specific time I was in Marseille and I was just visiting a hospital for the tournament. And these people didn't really know who I was at the time. And um, they were not massive tennis fans, but just to, they're, they're, they're sort of look on their faces to give them hope. Like some of these kids were not even going to make it out of that hospital. But the fact that I went in there and took time and someone like an athlete could just there and give them their time and, you know, light them up for, you know, like a half an hour. Like that's when I just realized, like, you know, I feel like I always had that in me, but the fact that I have it now to actually make an impact was the most special thing about it. And I think that's what really woke it up in me. And I, that's when I genuinely feel my, my happiest is when, you know, I could be with one, some of my best friends or, you know, playing tennis with like, for instance, say Babs or something like that. And we would just like happily go over to a group of kids that are playing and we would just join in play mini tennis because like, I just feel like it's about giving those, giving those people hope and just making them, making the day, you know, that impact is, uh, is massive. I think that's what it's about. As you'll have noticed from the podcast, in recent years, Kyrgios has made a massive shift, like you said. He's playing tennis for other people, and he's making it less about himself and more about inspiring people, using his platform to help people and bring joy and happiness to others, which for me is what life is really about. Sure, it would be awesome to win a few more titles or maximise potential, but if that comes at the expense of happiness, being selfish and not caring for other people, then it's not worth it in my eyes. I think this is the first massively positive thing that he doesn't receive enough credit for. Like for me, like in juniors, like I just wanted to vibe. Like whether it, like we used to stay at Wimbledon, all the girls and all the guys used to stay in the same floor. And like for me, that was just like, dude, that was golden. I was like, dude, this is unreal. Like we can do, like we can have so much fun and nothing. And I think actually the, the fact that I haven't changed that much since then and everyone in the professional tour now is so serious. I've just lost it. Like, I don't know, like, I've always been about just having good bands and like, as you say, camaraderie and creating these memories. Like, I think that's more important. But man, like, I miss those junior days, man. Like, everyone wanted to hang out and stuff. So yeah, that's, I uh, definitely haven't changed since then. Wins and losses for me were not, like, I look back at that and I'm just like, they're not, that's not what's made my career. I think I've just, I've just done it my own way and I've had a lot of fun with it. 
but like I've I've come like I've looked at myself in the mirror and had these conversations to get to get to know myself, and I'm just like, I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay with say me making a fourth round and then you know messaging you guys saying, hey, what are we doing tonight? Like let's have some fun. Like I'd much prefer that, you know, like because it's like that's special. I think. Well, I like, guess I've, that's I've what they say. Ultimate freedom. Well, I guess that's, that's what they say about life, isn't it? It's all about um, you know you got to do what makes you happy, and I think it's I think yeah. I do think it's unfair that yeah you you get that criticism because essentially you're just doing what what you want to do, and there's so many people around the world who do the exact same thing, uh, and you Hello. don't see the you know the same sort of tennis star you know the the news readers. <laughs> <but>, uh, <laughs> Um, it's, 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 it's bullshit, bro. Um, it is. As you can see from the second clip, he's not really bothered about chasing money and success and fame just for the sake of it. He's content with where he is. He wants to enjoy his life, do what makes him happy, have fun with his mates and appreciate what he has, which I think is secretly genius. So many of us trade our happiness and our present moments for the pursuit of more success, more fame and more money. We end up just being miserable and depressed. I think this is something that so many of us can learn from him. Sure, it's good to want to grow and have goals to further ourselves, but let's not forget to enjoy ourselves and appreciate where we are and what we already have. I think the reason he gets so much stick and so many people get pissed at him for not maximising his potential as a player is because people are secretly jealous of his life and his abilities. They see how hard they work themselves in order to succeed, and then they see him enjoying himself and his life, and he's so far ahead of them but then they feel jealous and try to pull him down just because they aren't content with their own lives. So I think all of us can learn to be content with where we are, just like Nick is. If you'd like to see more videos like this, give me a hell yes in the comments below and please be sure to subscribe to my channel.